So today I'm here with Dr. Simon Raybould. Um, I don't think we'll get into the doctor bit if that's all right. One of my daughters said it's a little bit like a brownie badge, a little bit harder. That was it. A little, little bit, bit harder. harder than a brownie badge. Fair enough. Um, but presentation, your yeah. thing, allegedly. So <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Um, but what I really want to get an idea and a sense of is, is if you were teaching somebody to present to camera, like we're doing, well, not because this is an interview style, but if somebody was just presenting to an inanimate object, which is always the issue, there are usually two things that I find people have an issue with. Uh, it's being comfortable enough mm -hmm. and authentic enough on camera. So are there any tips and techniques that you can yeah, kind of give us? Yeah, there are a lot. So you're talking about a talking head when you're looking straight at the camera. So maybe you're doing a webinar and that kind of thing. Okay, so um, the getting comfortable thing is always a real challenge. And there are loads of little tricks that you can use. The first is embarrassingly simple, just embarrassingly simple. Just try standing up. Uh, it changes your whole demeanor and it makes you feel like you're giving a presentation as opposed to just sitting and chatting on your desk. So your whole mindset changes. And it changes the way your voice sounds as well. Uh, another trick that people use a lot is to have a photograph of real people <laughs> uh, and to put it behind the, the camera or the computer or whatever it is that they're talking to so that they don't obsess with the mm -hmm. um, because if the worst thing you can do is actually focus here because as far as your audience is concerned they are here okay so you just put photographs and, and talk to the photographs behind the behind the camera now that helps with the the mindset as well because you're talking to you're talking to images of real people so as well as changing your depth of i'm going to call it depth of focus but you know you know what i mean uh, it also changes your it, it also changes your mindset uh, the other things you can do, of course, are to get completely comfortable with your material. And I know, oh, I know everyone's going to hate me saying that. But the main problem that people have when they start to talk to camera is this, uh, what are we going to say next? <laughs> if you can't say it live, you shouldn't be saying it to a camera. And yes, I know you can edit out the occasional gaff. You know, if something falls over, that's, you can edit that out. But you can't edit out the erms and the hesitations quite quite so naturally and quite so easily. So if you don't know what you're going to say, at least for the duration of a paragraph, you shouldn't be saying it. Which brings us to teleprompters. Don't. <laughs> the only person I know who can use a teleprompter and make it look like they're completely natural is Barack Obama and he's had shed loads of training to the point where actually he finds it difficult now to speak without a teleprompter. Right? So you get this out, people have, have commented to me that they Obama is a natural on stage. Look how he looks this way, and he and he looks that way. And that's not natural. That's looking where his flipping words are being projected. He's just using the teleprompter to, to do that. So don't, because it changes your whole demeanour. Unless you are completely trained on a teleprompter, don't do it. The the thing that I'm really keen to try and get an idea of with the authenticity is about pace. If it's if it's not your natural pace, yeah, and it's having energy. So how do you keep the energy and the pace by right. being authentic to yourself? Right. Energy is a huge problem. Uh, we talk about a, a, an energy sap. The more technology there is between you and your audience, the more energy gets sapped out of what you're saying. It's true, even if you're presenting live and using a microphone, there's less energy in what the audience receives than, than, you know, than you're putting in. And it gets more and more of a problem as you get more and more bits of technology. So if you're sitting at home watching this interview, there's a shed load of technology between you and I and whoever's, if anybody is watching this. Then, uh, so you need to keep your energy up really, really high, particularly when you're doing talking heads to cameras, video shots for webinars and that kind of stuff, because brutally, people don't listen to them. They kind of put them on in the background and then they check their emails. And the problem with that is that people think they can multitask. They go, oh, I'll just listen to this and I'll check my emails. So the list of people who can multitask in this room is none. You cannot do it. Stop fooling yourself. Stop pretending you can. So if you're listening to this, stop what you're doing and listen to this. Okay. But what we can do as presenters when you're talking to the camera is hype everything. Um, I want you to imagine, a, you know the old, I've forgotten who it was now, the old joke about turn everything up to 11 on the amplifiers? It's that. Because what feels like really stupid levels of ah! uh, to the presenter just feels like normal common sense speech to the person that's on the receiving end of it. And the other trick you can use, uh, by the way, the standing up helps with, with that as well. The other trick you can use is to make sure that on a webinar and that kind of jazz, whenever you're going and showing slides, 
something happens a lot more frequently than it would happen in a live presentation. So live, for example, I can put up a slide and talk about uh, the content from anything between three seconds and three minutes or 20 minutes, depending upon what's on the slide. I wouldn't dream of doing that on a webinar. Now, as a very, very crude rule of thumb, and it is so crude, I hate myself for saying it, because if I give people rules of thumb, they take them as rules, right? This is a guideline, not a rule. Five or six seconds. Uh, and it annoys me when you see people put a bullet point on the slide and then talk about it for a minute, and then another bullet point, and they talk about it, and then another bullet point, and they talk about it. You might get away with that live, but you won't, because they're bullet points, and you should be shot with them. But on a webinar type thing, you need bang, bang, bang. People won't, won't concentrate for as long as they would otherwise concentrate. So you need to have things happening. And in an ideal world, one of the things that would be happening is your face, right? We are evolutionarily programmed and designed to be interested in faces, right? Babies look at faces and they recognize faces and stuff, even from, you know, from, from pretty much straight out of the, uh, out, out of the, out of the womb. If you can possibly keep your face on camera, then keep your face on camera. And there's some really good, cheap, and even free software now that will allow you to record yourself with a talking head and slide yourself into the slide. Now, obviously you don't do it all the time because that's just pretentious and, or, you know, but on those occasions when the energy on the slide deck starts to dip, you can boost it by having more things happening on the slides and having yourself talking. Let's see your, your face talking. It's been really insightful, Simon. I'm yeah. so grateful for you uh, allowing me the time to come and have I, a chat with I you. I hope it's been useful. It has definitely been useful. If people want to find out a bit more about the kind of stuff that you do and to get a bit more in depth kind of knowledge okay. intuition, where can they find you? The easiest way is presentationgenius.info. It's not the world's most modest website title, I grant you. Presentationgenius.info. And if they want to get the hints and tips and the free training courses and stuff, presentation presentationgenius.info slash hi. Fantastic. Thanks again, Simon. You're welcome. Thank you. Don't forget, if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's the, the icon link at the bottom of the page on the left-hand side. And the top link will take you through to one of my latest tutorials. Speak to you again next week.